Jake Ludington here at HPE Discover, and I'm here with Jeff Smith. And the thing that seems to be going on in the market right now with businesses is they're getting something that is called asymmetrical competition. Can you break down a little bit what that means? Sure. Um, conventional competition, symmetrical competition would be those that we always have thought of as being in the same class of service or class of product competing for the same customer purchase occasions. What we're observing through the advent of digital change in how customers buy is the introduction of people who come in to sell services and products that sell digitally, and they're not part of the conventional set. So if I've been a telephone company, um, I compete with other telephone companies. That's how the telcos have always thought about their service. Now I've got electric utilities thinking they can compete with me. I've got app and voice over IP businesses competing with me. You know, the largest phone company on the planet right now is Skype. They don't own any telco equipment. They sure right? don't. Right? Airbnb is the largest provider of accommodations on the planet. They don't own any rooms. Right? So these are, these are these asset free and yet high service, high customer contact businesses. And they are asymmetrically entering the competitive marketplace for the conventional guys, the hotel chains or the telcos. We're saying, wait a minute, what just hit me? And we think this is a big change that people need to recognize. And some of our clients are saying, how do we do something about this proactively where we can exploit the change rather than becoming victims of it? So how does HPE then help these people figure out how to make that change? Well, first, we, ac we actually go talk to the customers. We spend time with their customers understanding how they have become digital in their purchasing. And from that, we discern through some of our advisory services where um, basically the customer's new service catalog is as they think about it, rather than the way everybody inside the industry has always thought they sold. Once we've got that definition, we work with the client to decide where are your opportunities to create something or to repurpose existing capability you have to aim at a particular set of purchase occasions that are part of this new digital purchasing process of your customer. And then we help them design that business, design the systems to support it, transform and deploy, and ultimately, if they want us to, help them run it afterwards. How do you get to the, the smart questions to ask to get that out of the customer, though? Because, I mean, like Airbnb, it's pretty easy to arrive at. I used to stay at Marriott or Hyatt or wherever, and now all of a sudden I'm, I'm going to Airbnb and finding places to stay there. Right. But there are business sectors where it'd be a lot more complicated to figure out where did that slice of the pie go. Right, right. I, I, it's a great question. I think the two parts. One is, um, there's an aspect of this that certainly favors consumer-oriented purchase decisions right now because they are more straightforward. And the consumer, like it or not, for those that have traditionally thought about the consumer as one dimension of a consumer. So a retail banking consumer is just that if I'm a retail bank. I don't think about the fact that they also buy groceries and they also go to the movies and they also buy automobiles and they also have a home mortgage. Even though those are also part of the same consumer living a whole life. Nowadays, what we're seeing with digital disruption is the fact that the consumer is thinking, why can't I buy the same way for everything? And the smart and symmetrical entry points are saying, I'll sell to them anything they want to buy that way. And, you know, I mean, Amazon might be version 0 0.5 of this, right? Because in a way, they've tried to become all things to that person who wants to be an Amazon Prime customer. They certainly have. I use them. Right. Well, I do too. And, and I think that's ind more indicative of the fact that there's an appetite for that from the customer. Not because there are 15 other uh, competitors who've thought through how Amazon just took some of their lunch money. So I think a big part of it is, on the consumer side, is thinking through how consumers are going to purchase consistently, almost from a process standpoint. And, that's the pro and we try to understand that process. We will document the decision flow of a consumer. And we have to recognize that there's segmentation by socioeconomic and age demographics, as well as geography. I mean, the biggest marketplace in the world right now for digital wallets, in terms of actual penetration of digital wallet usage, is Afghanistan. Really? Because it's very unsafe to carry a real wallet in Afghanistan. Well, that makes sense. But everybody's got cell phones, so they get them preloaded, and I can buy stuff with my cell phone in Afghanistan safely. That kind of stuff isn't intuitively obvious to many people, particularly in the West. You gotta go do the homework. And that's one of the things our advisory team does in constructing the fact base that helps people design how they want a new business to operate. So you guys went out and hired a bunch of smart people that are helping go identify these problems then is the, is the way that you're addressing it. That's right. And our, consult, so our consulting advisory service is about a thousand people in my industry solutions group globally. And we focus on nine major industries that our clients operate in today. 
um, of which probably six of the nine have a consumer flavor to them, healthcare, travel, uh, consumer goods, retail, and so on. Um, interestingly, we're seeing a lot of interest in the public sector, though, where you trans translate from consumer to citizen and constituent. And so places like uh, the island of Guernsey have decided they want to digitize their entire e-government experience, and we're helping them do that. And that's being driven by the top government leaders there. And the UK government's paying very close attention because Guernsey's a little bit of a living laboratory for things they may choose to extract and put into their much larger uh, country situation. That's the kind of stuff we're seeing people do. And, and really it sounds like what you're saying is that, that you're kind of backfilling digital behaviors that consumers have adopted all the way back out to whoever the, the company selling to those end consumers, whether, whether it's a business or an actual end user. That's right. That's right. Um, and when we do it, we think in terms of where can I do this in a way that I can abstract value? So are there now efficiencies in capital, efficiencies in assets, efficiencies in employee and talent that can be exploited because technology can do something to create an amplifier effect that touches what the customer wants without having to invest in a resource that I used to have to use in the conventional way. Um, and you know, the old style, hire the customer to do self-service order taking, that's really not what we're talking about here. It's really more about an experience. Um, I was sitting with an airline uh, client not too long ago, we were talking about mobile apps in the airlines. And we pulled up his company's, here's airlines app, which basically presented you with a graphics-based screen scraper version of what his travel ticket guy would fill in you know on a mainframe and then I pulled up Virgin and I said let's start by remembering that Branson and company think they're a brand company and the brands are the thing they want to have a relationship a loving relationship with their customer and so I hit the app and it comes up and in big letters it says hello gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> and I said they're not looking at a screen scraper of a TPF mainframe thing here guys they're getting greeted right in an, in a high touch relationship way by technology and that's what we think is the thing we're going to see more and more of the smart players do understanding that customer and what the customer is choosing to buy and value in it and then technology becomes the amplifier for it absolutely well thanks jeff thank you very much